20 seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. It's Anish, and I'm joined by our good friend Rishi. And um, today we're going to be talking about Kevin Porter Jr., his performance so far, and thoughts about him being the point guard of the future. And Rishi, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people who don't know you? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Rishi. First of all, thanks for watching the video. Um, I go by uh, on Twitter. I'm best known as KPJGoat3. That's like my handle. And my name is Rishi on Twitter as well. Uh, mostly just tweet Rockets basketball and some other NBA basketball. <laughs> And yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and definitely drop, give him a follow as well. And so, as you all know, there's been a lot of heated debate about Kevin Porter Jr. Um, so far, his season averages are, he's averaging 12.2 points per game, 5.8 assists. Um, he's averaging 4.3 rebounds, shooting 32.2% from the three, 35.7 from the field. And a lot of people are having some doubts on the point guard experiment in Kevin Porter Jr. Obviously, he's shown some flashes, but um, he's been mostly inconsistent. Um, as, as I've told you, his, his efficiency hasn't looked the greatest. And um, so um, there's been a lot of sides to, as to what people think um, about Kevin Porter Jr.'s future. Some people say to pull the plug on the KPJ point guard experiment and give him a different role by m either moving him to the wing, wing position or even putting him um, as a six man coming off the bench. Um, some people are more willing to be patient, but they're kind of getting more frustrated, but they're still willing to wait it out, give him more time. And then some people are saying they're entirely done with KPJ and they want him traded and seeing how the Rockets didn't give up too much or nothing at all to acquire him. There isn't much to be lost by losing him. That's what some people are saying. So they want him gone. Um, I'm just curious as to what you think and about his performance so far this season. So I'm just going to address it straight away. Uh, this team is going to have Kevin Porter Jr. Like no matter in what, no matter what role we see in the future from him or like there's, there's absolutely no way this team cuts him because of all the things we've invested already so far and like trying to give him to the keys point to the point guard and like, like portraying him as like the future front court duo with Jalen Green and all that. There's no way that he like finds himself off this team, regardless of the role. And yeah, it's this season's been super rocky to start and that, that's just how it's been. He's, he's played awful to simply put it, but I think there's a lot of stuff that the management uh, did wrong over the off season that we kind of, like misread, I guess we we, uh, we were expecting like too much of a jump, I guess, from KPJ. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are saying his shot selection is terrible, and people are saying like I don't want him taking shots away from Jalen Green, but it's already been established that Jalen Green wants KPJ. Like they were before the draft, they were texting with each other, like a, like KPJ to Green, like dang, I really hope you come to Houston, whatnot, and they they've already formed a really great bond together. Um, it's just um. It looks like the pairing is kind of rocky to start with, but um, like you said, um, it's it's just we need to wait a while to see because I don't know. It's it's for me. I'm really mixed on this because I want to try the um, experiment of moving KPJ to another position, but I think that doesn't really hurt uh, help his confidence at all. And it was kind of seen earlier that um, KPJ deactivated his Twitter um, and whatnot, so that, that's something to look out for. I mean, he's trying to quiet out the noise and whatnot. Um, but he has made some improvements, I guess, with um, his turnovers, at least um, at, in October, he was averaging around five, point, uh, like five turnovers. Um, but in January, he's averaging like 2.8 turno uh, turnovers. So yeah, in October, 5.3 turnovers in January, 2.8 turnovers. So he's been doing a better job with that. But again, he's been kind of a lot of people are saying that he's not doing a great job in initiating the offense. Sure, there's been great games of like, I guess, like, I guess the one in Charlotte against the Hornets where he had a great game. He's showing a lot of flashes as a passer. And like, as far as like potential assists go, I think we mentioned it in a previous video, but he has like 10 point something potential assists. Um, it's just a matter of like teammates knocking down shots. Um, but a lot of people are getting really frustrated with him. Like, do you, why do you think, why do you think he's struggling? Do you think it's like the double big men lineups from earlier? Or is it like Christian Wood not performing well at all? Because I know, because when Christian Wood was balling out last season, KBJ was also thriving, of course, but um, but Wood having somewhat of a regression and KBJ kind of having somewhat of a regression, do you think it's because of that? Or what, what else do you think? Do you think it's the size of the system, not calling enough plays for KBJ? What, what do you think is happening? So it's, it's kind of like, for me, there's, there's like three main things and it's a combination of all of them. I'm gonna just go one by one and then I'll hear your thoughts on each one of them. So first, it's pretty clear to me, like you already mentioned, he averaged what, like five point something turnovers in October. And that was when we were running the double big lineup. And you guys have to understand that as a ball handler, as soon as you take one or two dribbles inside the three point line, 
you, you're seeing that second defender come over and that that causes a lot of problems with ball handlers because not like not everyone is like equipped to deal with the double especially dribbling out of it and especially not a young point guard at, uh, that's like trying to transition from a different position which is what KPJ is doing Yeah, and a lot of people, like, it's, like, his, um, a lot of people are concerned with, like, how much he dribbles, and he just, like, tries to do something, but then, and then he quickly, like, dribbles out of it. Um, He's not, like, making, having quick decision makings, like, he has to be more selective with his ISOs and, like, uh, quickly make decisions, and I feel like he, he feels, like, the burden of trying to carry this team, especially when it's in such a, a down period, like, with us, like, being on another losing streak of, like, 10 plus games now. Um, it's, it's really hard um, for KBJ, so he probably feels that burden on him. And I know he's been dealing with a thigh injury. Um, like, I don't know if that's ongoing or not, but it's just, it's tough, man. And obviously it doesn't excuse some of his like um, basketball, like decisions. Like um, he does have some bouts of like poor basketball IQ on the court. So that, that's, that's the whole frustration. That's where it's coming from. Um, but as far as plays, um, there's been like debate on whether like, is KPJ the right point guard that suits us the system or is Silas um, not creating enough plays for KPJ? Like, what do you think about that? Like, um, do you think KBJ can thrive in Silas' system? All right, so that, that that was my second main point, right? So basically, we, for in terms of plays, like the only play I can remember us running is this little uh, double screen, like drag action out of the corner for Jalen Green. And that is seriously the only play I can remember from like from the games this season. Um, we try, we, we've tried like pick and pops with Tice and that just doesn't work. And it's kind of like forced because like Tyson's defender is just sagging off of him and he's like basically sitting in the paint. And yeah, I think that's a huge part of why KPJ has struggled so much because this season, uh, last year we had wall, we, we had like a, like a multiple like ball handlers in and out of the, um, what do you call it? The roster and like the team in general, like we had Oladipo at one point, we had wall, we had Augustine playing minutes. Obviously we had Eric Gordon, but this year we're not playing, we're not playing wall obviously. And we're not playing DJ Augustine a lot. Like he's getting, some run here and there, but he was obviously in and out of protocols and all that. So basically, whenever KPJ is playing, he's essentially like the only playmaker we're looking to. We've tried running Eric Gordon at point guard, and that's just not him. He's just a scoring guard, and that, that's how it is at this point in his career. And I think that's like a main problem. Like We don't have any plays to run, or maybe we do. We're just not running them. I don't see why. And like the plays we do run, well, just like – it's it's even harder to execute because KPJ is obviously the only ball handler and he has no one to like look to. I mean, I know I see like Jalen Green down the line uh, handling the ball at times, running some plays, pick and rolls, like basic stuff. But right now he's not Jalen's handle is not ready for the NBA. So, I don't know. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like like uh, like to your point, like as far as like point guard wise, like he's only played twenty five games as point guard. Um, like he's played more games as small forward. And then as an equal number of games, a shooting guard as point guard. So like he still needs to get used to the position and it's not an easy one, of course. And like, to your point about like him having multiple ball handlers last season with Old Depot and Wall, um, a lot of that playmaking load has been taken off of him. But now with this new role of point guard, it's, it's a lot to take on. And um, as far as like other people who can be a point guard on this team, it's not that many names, like you mentioned. So it's like just DJ Augustine and then Shangun's like a point center or whatnot. Um, so like, it's it's really hard for KBJ to just take all that in. And as far as like, um, the, like the team prioritizing KBJ's development, there's been times where like Eric Gordon and Garrison Matthews played more minutes than KBJ and like um, other times like that. So it's just like really questioning like what this team is trying to uh, like, va like value. Um, is it like Jalen Green's development? And it doesn't even look like they're valuing Jalen Green's development with how he's getting like so like limited shots, um, limited opportunities. So it's just really head scratching what this coaching staff is doing. Um, and it's kind of causing people to write, like raise their pitchforks again, um, calling for Silas's firing, uh, which is really strange how this whole season has gone. But um, but yeah, like what, like what do you think with this um, pairing? Like a lot of people think like KBJ is like a combo guard, like a, he's more of a like since the shooting efficiency is not the greatest, he's more like a slasher. Um, he's not someone who's going to just like be like, I've, I've seen some comparisons to like Jamal Murray, um, but a lot of people aren't really seeing the, the, the right comparison for that because he's not that great of a shooter. And I really hope he does um, get that, get, get better at that. But it's just like the spacing so far hasn't been the greatest. And I know Garrison Matthews, we got him and we also have Armani Brooks, but like there needs to be better plays called, um, or I don't know if it's like personnel, but it, it's just really hard right now. But um uh, 
but yeah what do you think about like this backcourt pairing like um of Jalen Green and KBJ do you think it's like something that will last like years into the future or do you think it, it won't last obviously the the two Jalen Green and KBJ they want it to last forever like already those like reports came out today with uh Kelly uh Kelly's article from the athletic those reports came out you know they texted each other before the draft blah 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 obviously they wanted to succeed really bad our management has invested in them but as you said it's it's like sometimes a, a bit head scratching like how we have like Garrison Matthews and Eric Gordon playing more minutes than those two at times but then again um you know uh Jalen Green had that hamstring injury and hamstring injuries are nagging and at some times like you think you think you're okay but those come back at like the most random times like those are tricky right they they last for like they can last through the whole season and you won't even notice like it'll just come back randomly one day and I feel like we, we, we try to be like safe with that, I guess, because he's already had a hamstring issue in the summer league. And and then KPJ also had that thigh injury, which can also be nagging at times. But yeah, and I don't get why we don't play them in the fourth quarter sometimes. That's also questionable. But in terms of their pairing, I think it could work if like obviously KPJ develops more as a uh, more of a playmaker. Like one of them needs to be the playmaker in this duo, right? Because if we look back at all like the like the great front court duos, like Chris Paul and James Harden, like uh, one of them always looked to score and the other one always looked to playmate, like when they were on the floor. Obviously they make like reads during the game, but one of them, they're both elite playmakers and we were able to like uh, play off that. And uh, I think KPJ already is like a decent playmaker, but when we put him at the point guard, he's like, yeah, uh, you brought it up earlier. And he's like thinking too much and he picks up his dribble a lot. And that's a problem obviously, but like once he gets going in the point guard role, I feel like he'll, that'll like go down. And Jalen, he's already shown some like basic playmaking stuff, which will obviously get better as his handle gets better. So I think this duo could work if they like both collectively improve their playmaking. Uh, if it doesn't, we move. Uh, I guess I guess the best way to go about it would be to move uh, Jalen Green to the small forward and then KBJ to the two guard with like playmaking uh, um, duties and like get a real point guard and have Jalen Green as like the score slash wing um, ball handler at times. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, like, I don't, they don't think KBJ is, like, a pure point guard. And obviously, it's hard to find, like, players like Chris Paul, who's, like, the epitome of, like, a pure point guard. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's there's been some games, like, as in, like, the Lakers game, where, um, like, where Green, fin like, with one of those Lakers game, like, Green finished with 24 points, um, Kevin Porter Jr. finished with 22 points, nine assists, five rebounds. Green had 24 points, four rebounds, two assists, two steals. And they passed each other. Green pa made 186 passes to Kevin Porter Jr. And Kevin Porter Jr. passed 269 passes to Jalen Green. So they, they're definitely building some chemistry. And obviously, we see, like, in the fast breaks, um, where, like, Kevin Porter Jr. sees Jalen Green, like, um, move, like, get a lob towards the rim. Um, so alley-oop. So, I mean, we're starting to see the chemistry. It's just, like, we're not seeing that as often. Um, and like, and it doesn't obviously it doesn't help that our defense is like dead last in the league by a good amount. Um, so it's just it's just hard to see um, where this is going. And um, moving on, like, do you think the Rockets should talk about like kind of think of the possibilities of maybe bringing up Wall, seeing if we should bring him up as point guard and in that role, or do you think we should all like entertain the possibility of Josh Christopher as the point guard, who a lot of people think he's better. Um, uh, at like making decisions quicker and more selective with ISOing, um, or do what are your thoughts about like either Josh Christopher or John Wall um, at point guard? Uh, before I answer that question, I just want to address like the third main point in why KBJ struggled so much this season is running the pick and roll and the pick and pop. Uh, so far this season, we've mainly had like tried to get Wood to do it, and he just I don't know. Um, I have the stats pulled up, and he. He only runs the pick and roll with uh, runs the pick and roll for us on like for about three times a game, which is just not enough considering we don't have set plays and like uh, like KP. I mean Silas is like a players coach and he kind of lets lets them go out and do their thing. But the problem is we're all we're, our team is full of young guys and like trying to find their role in the league, and we definitely need to have set plays for them to run. But we only have Wood running the pick and roll three times a game, which is just ridiculous to me because he's such a good finisher around the rim. So running that pick and roll less has hurt KPJ uh, in the playmaking as like a point guard, et cetera. And last season we had Kelly Olenek, man. He was fantastic for us. Like he, he would run the pick and pops and the pick and rolls with Kevin. And he would like, he was obviously efficient out of it. We would run it about like two, two to three times a game. And then we had, we also had Wood running the pick and roll four times a game. 
So we were running more pick and rolls. We were obviously more efficient out of it. And Alinek helped our spacing a lot because he, he was able to shoot off like movement and uh, the league just had to respect that. You know, he's a veteran, shoots, I remember he was shooting like 36, 37%-ish last season. And that helped our spacing a lot with the pick and pops and the pick and rolls. Um, something like, I think we can fix, I think we can fix that this season, right? We need to get like, I think we need to get uh, like a like a full time like big man, obviously to help our rim protection and to run the pick and roll, uh, like Jalen Smith or Mo Bamba, or if you if we want to like address the issue like with our own roster, we need to expand KJ Martin's minutes and use him in the pick and roll more often because he's actually the most efficient scorer as the role man on this team, and he's struggling to like get like a solid amount of minutes and we do not use him in the pick and roll enough, and when Sangoon comes back from his uh, ankle sprain, we need to run more pick and rolls with him because his short roll uh, will be fantastic because like, like Draymond Green, like um, he sets a high screen and rolls to the center. And if we have Tate or KJ on the floor, like we have those cutters coming in and obviously he's like Sangoon is a fantastic playmaker. He has a vision and he sees the whole floor. And if we have him in the short roll, that'll be great. And that's just something I need to see uh, for the, like when he comes back and for the rest of the season. Yeah, and Shingu's, um predicted to come back on Friday, so that's really good news. And to your point about like getting a big man, another person that I've seen like kind of um, rumored like as far as like trade discussion goes could be Mitchell Robinson from the Knicks. He could be a decent uh, player for us. I don't know what we would trade for him, but he's been on the trading block I think for the Knicks for a decent while now, so that could be an interesting name. Um, but yeah, as far as like the Jalen Green KBJ combo. Um, a lot of people are saying like we should stagger their minutes, see what each one of them can do separately um, and see if that might help their development. But then Steven Silas um, replies as to why they're no longer staggered. He says, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see those guys play together, play off of each other, having one guy on one side of the floor and one guy on the other side of the floor. And then he was asked if he was looking for anything specific from those minutes. He said more cohesiveness than anything else, helping each other play well. Obviously, these are two important guys and it's important for us to know how well they can play together. And I feel like that's a valid answer. Um, but a lot of people, like I said earlier, just don't don't like seeing KBJ um, messing up Jalen Green's development, who and rightfully so think we should um, prioritize his development over KBJ's. But I believe there's a world where we can prioritize, oh my God, I can't even say prioritize both of these players. So, um, but yeah, as, um, could you answer as far as like whether or not we should bring Wall or Josh Christopher um, for point guard instead? Uh, so first, I'm going to just talk about Josh Christopher. Josh has been absolutely amazing for like the past two or three weeks ish. Like obviously, he's, I don't know, I saw it somewhere like some like 15 points a game. Obviously, his hustle on defense, like him, Tate and Nwaba are the only guys. And like KPJ on ball are like the only good defenders on this team. Um, off ball, we struggle a lot. But those three guys, Josh Christopher, Tate and Nwaba, those guys are fantastic on defense. And uh, he's been really efficient lately, but. I see him as the perfect sixth man role. And obviously we can try starting him at one point, like whenever KPJ is out or whatever with like protocols, blah, blah, blah. We could, we should definitely try starting him, see what that's about. But I don't think he has like the, uh, the, like the vision to be a straight up starting point guard. Like obviously he's like great in the fast break. Great. Um, he, you're right about his quick decision, decision-making compared to KPJ this season. Like KPJ has struggled with picking up the ball, confused on what to do at times, but Josh has been absolutely fantastic, and we should try starting him sometime this season, like a game or two, see how it goes. But long term, I don't, I just don't think like the, like the way, um, like as a prospect, I just don't think he can be a full time point guard. Like he's also more of a two guard. Like when I saw him coming into the league, I immediately thought of Eric Gordon, which is like with less three point shooting and like more slashing and transition type Eric Gordon. And yeah, those are my thoughts on him. And then. In terms of Wall, I think it's too late in the season to bring him back. Like, we just crossed the halfway mark, uh, if I'm not wrong. And and we already – he feels very disrespected that we didn't uh, offer him a starting role when he wanted to come back. And rightfully so. Like, if he thinks he's a star, I mean, that that's great for him. Like, he should believe he's a star if he is. Um, but if he does come back, I would only want him as a bench role with a lot of minutes with the starters, obviously. Uh I mean, it would be great if you would accept that, but I think it's too late to bring him back. And uh, you brought up about you brought up the Mitchell Robinson thing. The rumored uh, trade by Bobby Marks from ESPN was um, Christian Wood for Kemba Walker, Mitchell Robinson, and two first rounders. Which is, I mean, I would take that in a heartbeat. You know, um, with Kemba, Kemba's more of like he's like he's regressed. 
obviously, and he's kind of already accepted the bench role uh, at New York, you know, him, him in, in and out of the rotation. And I think, I think him off the bench sharing a lot of minutes with KPJ, like I think he would be a great point guard to help uh, KPJ teach the rope, like uh, help teach the ropes to KPJ of being a point guard. And then obviously Mitchell Robinson, he's not the best in the pick and roll that, that I pointed out earlier, but his rim protection is very much needed. And obviously defense to offense will be a very good transition team with all the athletes on our team. So I think if that deal comes up and it's like a real thing, we should definitely do that. But other than that, those are my stance. That's my stance on like Wall coming back mm -hmm. and uh, Mitchell yeah. Robinson. Yeah, to me, like with John Wall, it's like really hard for me to imagine. Like I know they've KBJ did pretty good with John Wall, but it's just like as far as development wise, like there's been times where John Wall just gets like um, I don't know, like locked in and he just wants to kind of like chip on my shoulder. I'm gonna I'm the franchise kind of type of thing where like he like just like is ball hogs a lot and um like I don't know. I don't know if John Wall would be willing to like be how do I say it like uh, I don't know, would be like willing to like play in terms of like helping out the like a, of uh, KBJ or Green, just like, like acting like a mentor on the court, like Chris Ball did with like uh, at the Thunder type deal. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't see John Wall doing that. I feel like he, if anything, he'd just be playing for like another opportunity somewhere or like just trying to showcase himself. So I don't know if he'd be as uh, selfless as we might expect him to be. And like you said, I think it's too late. And, um, and obviously, I don't think Stone wants to see um I mean they already agreed at the beginning of the season they don't um they're not they're not going to play John Wall um and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon and it seems like Silas wants to see KBJ and Jalen Green like play either swing or sink or swim regardless of what happens and just see see it just all play out as far as um Josh Christopher I would like to see see him at point guard at some point like you said um I think it'd be pretty intriguing and he's been working really hard to get more opportunities and I feel like he definitely deserves it um, so I mean that's something I love him man I love yeah. him like I, I love him. Streak, every day I see him just shooting around after like getting 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 exactly. by 20 I exactly. love him I know there's like something about like Arizona State <laughs> the number 13 yeah. <laughs> but yeah I mean that's pretty much it for the video let us know your thoughts on KPJ so far and as always be sure to like subscribe and turn on post notifications thank you for watching peace